Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Turkey has yet again affirmed its intention to try and join the Bricks. It's also announced that the Turkish president will attend in person the Bricks summit in the Russian city of Kazan in October. Now the Bricks leaders have confirmed their attendance and they include Xi Jinping of China, Narendra Modi of India, Lula of Brazil and Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa, plus obviously Putin who's the host. The presidents and prime ministers of around 20 other countries will attend and they include Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia and Venezuela. So it's going to be one huge influential gathering that reflects the growing power and influence that the BRICS organisation has in the world and it's much more reflective of a real world order than the US dominated G7 and G20 pantomimes. <coughs> Now, Turkey's recent efforts to join the BRICS group have caused a level of concern in the West, although for the time being, both Washington and Ankara are attempting to play these down. However, that said, observers, primarily American ones, continue to question what the course of the US ally in NATO will lead to. Mr Erdogan also stated at an event that took place in Ankara that the Republic of Turkey will adapt to the new power centres in the economic and technological spheres while maintaining an open approach to potential partners. This approach is that that underpins our country's desire to expand dialogue with all relevant parties and that includes the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation BRICS and the Association of East Asian Nations, the Turkish leader emphasised. While our primary focus remains with the West, that does not preclude us from pursuing stronger ties with the East. We are committed to forging a mutually beneficial relationship with our partners in the West, while also seeking to enhance our engagement in the East. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. <clears throat> now, Erdogan has stated that it's a logical step for Turkey to deepen its collaboration with the fast growing economies in East Asia and the Asia Pacific region in general. Now, given the context of the event he was attending, which was to present awards for the successful work of foreign contractors in Turkey, it was to be expected that the president would touch on foreign policy. However, the speech was also clearly directed at Ankara's current partners in NATO and the US. There have been instances where the West has expressed discontent with Turkey's stance, such as its refusal to endorse sanctions against Russia. However, at the beginning of the month, those concerns were addressed further. Bloomberg reported that the Republic had initiated the process of joining BRICS. Well, I reported on this in a couple of videos ago. Now, a few days later, the Russian presidential aide Yuri Yushakov confirmed this. He noted that Turkey had applied for full membership and that was going to be considered. Now, the opportunity to discuss the application will be happening at the end of October when the BRICS summit will be held in Kazan, to which Erdogan has been invited and has actually confirmed he will attend. Now, foreign analysts always interpret this as a clear indication of Turkey's shift towards the east particularly given its long-standing interest in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, mainly because there's a lot of Turkic language members involved. Now, the BRICS group has already undergone two expansions, which have not caused any significant concern in the West. However, the situation with Turkey is unique. I mean, this marked the first occasion that a NATO member has openly engaged with a bloc in which Russia and China play significant roles as exemplified by the SCO. Furthermore, they are traditionally regarded as part of the US club of foreign adversaries as, or enemies as the US likes to put it. I mean, that was confirmed by the US Senate Intelligence Committee, Mark Warner. And it's worth noting that according to Mr. Warner and others, the US treats any organization or country that's not subservient to as hostile and therefore needs to be attacked and destroyed or at least to be regime changed. Now, NATO itself has yet to issue a formal response 
to Turkey's extension, but that's understandable given that the North Atlantic Alliance is a military bloc and takes its orders directly from Washington. Now, BRICS and the SCO, on the other hand, are focused on economics and regional stability. And therefore, they're not in direct competition with NATO. In fact, nobody's in direct competition with NATO. NATO is unique as well as being an anachronism. The organisations are relic of the Cold War that should have been disbanded when the Warsaw Pact was and the so-called Soviet threat ended. And they withdrew back across Europe to the Russian border and have stayed there since. Since then, NATO has been used as a tool of the aggressive foreign policy of the US neocons in Europe and the Middle East, etc. And it's expanded all the way to Russia's border and is now involved in a proxy war with Russia in the Ukraine for the past 10 years. I mean, I always laugh when they say that NATO is peaceful and defensive. I mean, tell that to the Serbs and the family of the dead in Belgrade. Now, the United States, which basically runs and funds NATO, plus uses it as an attack dog, has adopted a cautious approach to the situation. Now, the US ambassador to Turkey, Michael Goldman, stated that Turkey is at liberty to establish ties with any country it chooses, and we are confident in the strength of our relationship with the Turkish Republic. You forgot to add that the relationship is fine and as long as it's with, having it with people we like and agree with. If not, we'll organise a coup like we did in 2016 when it was obvious that the CIA was involved with Fethullah Gulen in organising an unsuccessful coup against Erdogan that was foiled because of the warnings from Putin. However, this confidence is not shared by the media and uh, experts on either side. According to some analysts, Turkey's bid to join BRICS is both symbolic as well as strategic, as the country makes significant process, uh, progress in attempting to strengthen its influence in the world. And according to George Dyson of the consultant firm Control Risk, he believes the potential transformation of the Republic into an independent pole of power is the driving force between Ankara's interest in BRICS, regardless of the bloc's ties. Ankara's interest in BRICS also reflects its dissatisfaction with the current state of NATO, when it feels itself sidelined or at least at odds with other members. As the Turkish newspaper Star, which is close to the US uh, the <coughs> ruling Justice and Development Party, is clarifying. I mean, what he means is Erdogan's tired of being Washington's airbase in the Middle East and having to go along with US NATO policy on Israel, which is at odds with the population uh, at home in Turkey. Now, Sidan Sidi, who's a research fellow at the Washington based think tank FDD, also identifies its challenges within the North Atlantic Alliance, citing the sanctions against Ankara for buying the Russian S 400s. Um, and in 2019 and disagreements over Israel and Gaza. However, he highlights that Turkey's alignment with the Shanghai Cooperation Organization may pose also a uh, risk to the BRICS. But the country's membership of, of BRICS and SEO is a counterbalance to NATO, which has lost its effectiveness pretty much everywhere. What he means that Erdogan can see the writing on the wall that NATO is a busted flush and is now a laughing stock around the world after its failure in the UK falling on from the failure and humiliation in Afghanistan to a bunch of goat molesters. Now, obviously, Turkey has seen that being in NATO is no longer of a benefit to Turkey whatsoever. I mean, over the past decade, Ankara has demonstrated a clear desire to pursue a path of strategic autonomy, says uh, Sinan Ulgen, who's a former diplomat and head of the Istanbul-based think tank EDAM. Now, he states that the lack of participation from other NATO countries in BRICS will likely result in Ankara's decision being perceived as a shift away from the West, despite the authorities' assertion that it's merely a change in the balance. Or maybe could it be a case of a rat deciding to leave a sinking ship? I mean, Turkey's bid is yet another indication of its departure from the transatlantic community, says Asil Adin Tabas, who's a research fellow at the Brookings Institute in Washington. I mean, Europe is to blame, he says. Mr. Ulgan also highlights the complicated relationship within the European Union as an important point. 
I mean, the tension between the Turkey and the EU has been ongoing for many years. I mean, the Republic played a significant role in the establishment of the common European home. I mean, it was the 13th member to join the Council of Europe, and that's the continent's oldest international organisation. Well, it isn't actually, it, I heard the steel coal is the one, but never mind. But it's not been admitted to the Union despite applying three decades ago. I mean, you take the accession to the bloc of over a dozen other countries, including some of Europe's poorest, Turkey now knows it's never going to be admitted to the European Union. I mean, that said, Turkey should now see that not being a member of the EU is a bonus, as its economy could have been destroyed by Brussels, just like the rest of the countries, by the EU uh, anti-Russian sanctions. Instead, it benefited from them. Now, officials in Ankara are also open about the fact that to join the other blocs is connected precisely with the unconstructive position of Brussels. I mean, in particular, the head of the Turkish Foreign Ministry, Hakan Fidan, he basically said the following statement. Had economic integration with the EU resulted in membership, it's likely that Ankara would not have sought an alternative like BRICS. Now, the Brussels High Command, which is not open to negotiating the terms of the agreement for joining, uh, on the one hand, like the Americans, they reiterate the stance that, that Turkey has the right to decide what is best for itself. But as usual, the two-faced EU says one thing and means another. I mean, the EU diplomatic service head, Peter Stano, specified that the EU expects that candidates for membership of the Union, and that includes Turkey, will align their foreign policies along with the EU's. So it means follow what we do. Now, so it's evident the prospect of Turkey joining the BRICS is incompatible with the EU. Now, it's worth noting that no EU member states is currently a member of the BRICS, or is ever likely to be. I mean, let's be honest. The only country likely to make overtures towards the BRICS is possibly Hungary, given the recent investment into the country by China and its maintenance of a good relationship with Russia, including the Pax nuclear power plant and its ongoing Russian gas supplies. Now, Western officials have uh, reacted relatively restrainedly, perhaps because the BRICS members themselves are not in a hurry to expand. I mean, during the summer, the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, announced a decision to temporarily suspend the admission of new members to allow for a period of reflection and integration. However, it's not been determined whether any other country will be uh, admitted at this summit in Kazan, but it's certainly going to be on the agenda. However, what could transpire is the BRICS actually come up with a format for new members joining and a procedure for joining with various levels to be met and also potential several levels of membership that exist with the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which has full members plus observers and dialogue partners. So we could see in the BRICS offering various levels of involvement. Anyway, we'll know more once the <coughs> Kazan summit happens, uh, which is not too long. It's only the end of October. Meanwhile, Ankara's intentions are evident. Ultimately, NATO and the EU will undoubtedly replace their rhetoric about right to self-determination with concrete actions. Now, it's not clear what form they will take, but in any case, Turkey's taking the initiative which has caused the West a level of concern, and it may prompt them to make some concessions to, uh, to Turkey. In the meantime, Turkey obviously sees its future in the West and not with the EU-US warmongering, self-destructive set, who are obsessed with climate change and LGBT plus issues and not economic prosperity. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please uh, also, if you want to help, uh, click on the thanks button, make a small donation. And obviously the comments button. Love to get your comments, love to read your comments, love to respond to your comments. So thank you again and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.